Shane Rose, you're leaving for London tonight with Taurus. What kind of traveller is he? He's a pretty good traveller, actually. He's, uh, he, he's pretty sensible and he eats and drinks and does all the right things. So hopefully he'll do that today and tonight. And earlier in the year, you flew to New Zealand. It's obviously not as far as London, but how did he go with that trip? Yeah, I, that, was, that was my main reason to go over to New Zealand. It's a short trip and just that's his second trip to New Zealand now. And just give him some, some time in the air, just get used to going up and down. On the, I mean, for them, the scariest part is takeoff and landing and, and actually getting scissor lifted up into the plane and then pushed around. Once they're, they're flying, um, they're generally pretty good. So... Um, yeah, no, he's, he's done it a couple of times now, so it's all been good in, in the past and we're hoping tonight will be the same. What are you going to be doing while you're on the flight? <laughs> Catching up on a bit of sleep that we've been missing out on. Um, no, nah, look, we, we get up every, every couple of hours and just check on them, make sure their temperatures are right and um, make sure they've got food and water available to them and, and monitor their water intake and, and just make sure everything's going well um, and, yeah, give them a bit of time to themselves so they can chill out a bit, but... Um, yeah, there's not much sleep for them, unfortunately, for the, for the 30 hours odd that they're, um, they're going to be sort of in transit. When did you start prepping him for the flight? Uh, look, he, he's sort of, the last few days have sort of been aimed at trying to, um, you know, we've been reducing his grain a little and, and, you know, making sure that he hasn't, he hasn't galloped sort of recently or, you know, done anything strenuous that's going to make him stiff or sore. So just sort of um, tapering down his exercise a little until he gets... Uh, on the plane tonight, obviously. Today just went for a little, little trot and canter around just for some exercise and loosen up. And then, yeah, he, um, he, he probably won't do much when the first day or so once he arrives until he's starting to feel well. And then when he feels well and he you know, wants to buck and carry on, then, then that's when we'll start back into the work. Do horses suffer from jet lag? I don't think so. Uh, not really. I mean, horses sleep um, whenever anyway so it's not they don't have set routines where they sleep at night like we do uh, they sleep during the day and night so jet lag's not not so much an issue and um, I mean for us more you know hemisphere change so they're going from our winter to their summer and um, so uh, we've been keeping him in a box at night um, in the last sort of month or so uh, keeping the lights on so he's, when he gets there it's not going to be, you know, because in England, you know, they, it's light in their summer till 10 o'clock at night. So um, we've been trying to acclimatise him a little to the light preparation and and, and then uh, once he gets there he'll have a shave. Basically we'll clip all his hair off and, and um, so that he's not going to be too hot and then hopefully, you know, he, he'll settle in pretty well. And he'll have a birthday as well. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, 1st of August, so... Um, That'll be pretty much just after he uh, he finishes we, our final day of competitions, the 31st of July. So um, day after he goes to the Olympics, he turns 10. We might be celebrating with something special. <laughs> Hopefully a couple of gold medals would be nice. So, yeah, absolutely.